Hello and in this video I want to go into clonable DQMH modules. Now DQMH clonable module allows you to have multiple instances of that module. So for example here I'm going to use the tester to make four different instances. I'm going to send a message to all of those instances to show the front panel. And so I've got one, two, three, uh, four instances there. I could address an individual module, let's say 002 at the end, and tell it to show its block diagram. And you can see the block diagram for 414002 appeared. If we close that, we could choose another module and tell it to hide the panel, and we saw one disappeared there. And we can do that for some others as well, or select all of them, hide the front panel, and we can stop all of the instances as well. So in this video, let's go into how to use these clonable modules. To create our clonable module, you need to go to Tools, Delacor, DQMH, Module, Add New DQMH Module. Now I've already created one called Chat Window. And then instead of choosing Singleton this time, let's go on to Clonable. And the description says, a clonable module can have multiple reentrant instances running simultaneously. So we could have n number of this module running, which is pretty awesome. And as always, make sure we edit the overlay so we have a meaningful API. But as I've already created it, I'm going to cancel this, but you would click OK here. And so I've created this chat window clonable module. And underneath, I have a singleton module. If we look at the folder structure, you'll see they are very similar. Only the clonable module has a multiple instances virtual folder. And inside of this multiple instances folder, we have a module ring and we can use this as a register to keep a track of what instances are running. To show the basics of how a clonable module works, I'm going to create a very simple chat window so we can see the launching of modules, how we can stop modules, and how those modules can communicate to other modules. So how we can send messages from individual chat windows to other chat windows. The very basic design of this piece of software will be that the server module will launch n number of chat window modules. Let's dive straight into actually launching these chat windows. So I've created a bit of a user interface for the server where we can click this button to launch a new chat window. And on the block diagram, all I've done is create a case that handles the new chat window value change event. So when I click this button, I want to launch a new chat window. To do that, let's head over to the chat window API. Uh, we've got start module, synchronize module events, and obtain broadcast events for registration. So we'll drag those over, and we'll leave the broadcast events for registration over here, and we'll come back to that a bit later, and we'll drag the other two VIs into the case. So to be able to launch these clonable modules and be able to communicate back and forth, we need to register for events. So let's drag down the, the register for event function and wire that to the obtain broadcast events for registration VI. I'll put that there. Even inside of the case, we need to take a copy of the register for events function, remembering to change the name so it doesn't interfere with any of the scripting and wire this up. Now let's ensure the correct data flow of starting the module, then registering the events, then synchronizing those events. We'll wire up the events to be registered, making note that we wire to the bottom one, not to the top, to match over here. And then we should wire across the module ID and the wait for sync events. And we'll neaten this up a little bit and we can wire our errors through. So with this piece of code, we're going to be launching our modules when we click new chat window. However, it's really important we're able to launch and stop the modules. So let's go into the exit case. So let's go into requests and then stop module. Now, unlike singleton requests, with a clonable module, we have to give it an ID. That ID is similar to addressing a module. Because we want to stop every single module, let's wire in a minus one here. So a minus one 
means that we want to stop every module. There's one final thing I want to do here and that's to show the front panel of the module once it's been launched. So I could put in a request here to show the panel, however I'm going to wait until there's an acknowledgement that that module has been initialized by adding a new event case and going to module did init, click OK and then I'll show the panel. And I can get the module ID from the left hand node. So let's wire this up and make it a bit neater. So that should be everything we need to do. So, so just as a quick recap, we're registering the event data type essentially here. We're then launching various chat windows. We're opening the front panel once it's been initialized, even at the end, we stop all modules. So let's run this VI and open new chat windows. So we've got one here, got another one. This is looking good so far. And so perfect, we've launched about six there, I think. And if I stop the server, everything should stop as well. As it did, and in our project, we have no locked symbols, so we know that nothing is running. So now we've successfully launched these clonable modules. Now let's change that clonable module and make it a bit more interesting. So I'll close the server and open up the chat window main VI. And I'll delete this documentation so we have a bit more space and I'll create a very quick user interface. I thought I'd pause here and just show you what I was about to do. So I want to make it so at runtime only this portion of the user interface is shown but in development time I see all of my controls and indicators. The way I'm going to do that is resize this window and so it's the size I want it to be at runtime. Then click Control i to open up the properties. You then go to window runtime position, go to centered primary, and then the panel size, I'm going to set the current panel size, and then scroll panes to origin at runtime and click OK. Then as I make my front panel bigger, notice that on LabVIEW 2019, we get this border. So when I run the module, the module shrinks down to that border, but at edit time, it goes back to its original form. And that's just reminded me I want to turn off the scroll bars. I'll do that by going into Window Appearance, Customize and deselecting scroll bars. Now we have a really basic user interface, let's have a look at sending it a message. So let's go to Tools, Delacor, DQMH, Event, Create New DQMH Event. And the event we want to create one for is the chat window. We'll send it to Request Event and the name of the event is going to be new message. In then the event description we could say something along the lines of a new message was sent to this chat window. And then in the arguments window the event message is going to be a string because our users are going to be sending strings to each other. So we'll call that chat message and click OK. So now this is going to be scripting a message in the same way we've seen in the previous videos. And as always, we need to update our tester. So in our tester, we have the new message and we've got this module ID. Now I haven't actually explicitly said it yet, but the module ID is the address to every clonable module. So we might have a hundred instances of this module. And so we would have a hundred unique module IDs. So we need to say, which module ID do we want to send the message to? In the tester, the integer number that runs across the top here is actually linked directly to select module to send request to. And the ring is going to update when we launch new modules and when those modules stop. So on the block diagram, we'll wire directly to the ring value. So we're going to create a control. Then on the front panel, we need to move new message into a suitable location. Let's move it there and make the chat message. A little bit bigger. And then on the block diagram we need to delete the code needed box, save it and that's all we need to do for the tester. On the module block diagram as this message says we need to configure this case and then delete when done. Let's just wire the chat message directly to the front panel to the message in indicator. Control shift s to save all and we'll delete the label. 
And then let's make sure this works in our tester. So let's go to test chat window API, can run this, run new module instance, so the front panel, we can send a message of hello there, send message, and you can see that it's appeared. Brilliant. But now let's launch a couple more, show all the module front panels. I'll spread those out a little bit. There we go. I will send the message again. I can see that all of these chat windows received that message. But let's say I only wanted to send one of them a message. Let's take this one, ending in 0006. So I'll put this one up there and select 0006 and then send it another message. And we'll see that the 0006 chat window received a message, but none of the others did. And that's because we sent the message to this ID. However, we can send a message to all, which is the equivalent of a module ID of negative one, then send the message, and then now everyone else gets that message. Great, let's stop those instances. And update the server module to be able to send out these global messages. So I'll go into server, click main, if then when I click send chat, I want to be able to send this message to my clonable modules. So I'll right click, go to create, event case, value change. Then in this new event case, I can send the request to my nested modules. And just to make sure this works, let's wire in a negative one up here, but we will update, update this to individual modules. So let's run this, get some new chat windows and send a message send chat and all of those clonable modules get them. Brilliant. Instead of sending this message to all of the clonable modules, let's just send it to a specific module. The way we're going to do that is allowing the user to select the module on the front panel. So let's place down a ring. We'll place down a system one, a system ring, and we need to change the numeric representation of this ring to an I32. And we'll change the name as well. So we want the user to be able to select the chat room they want to send a message to using this ring. To do that, we're going to take advantage of something that comes with the DQMH clonable modules, and that is a module ring. So we've got initialize select module ring and update select module ring. Let's drag both of those inside here and the initialize select module ring, we'll put that in the initialize case. We'll delete these labels. And to initialize the module ring, we need to enter a reference. So let's right click, create, and then a reference. And then every time we've successfully initialized a launched module, we want to update this ring. So we'll put the ring in there and share the reference as well. And then when we want to send the message, we can wire the chat window selection directly and save. Now let's see this in action. So we'll run this code, launch a new chat window. I'll move this out of the way. So we'll launch a couple. And now let's have a look at chat window selection. We've got all, two, three, and four. If we send a message to everyone, ASDF, everyone receives it. However, let's choose number three and send a message just to number three and send chat and you can see that only number three received that message. We could do the same for number four and then lastly for number two. There are two things I think that are left to do. The first is to acknowledge that when one of these chat windows closes, the list updates. The second is to be able to send a message from the individual chat windows to another instance. So let's start off by working out this close behavior. So when I click the panel close button on a clonable module, which is this X in the corner, I want to stop the module. I don't just want to close the panel. So let's go over to panel close. And instead of having an external launch, hide the front panel. Instead, I just want an external launch to go into the exit case. So I'm going to right click and remove case structure. I can delete this, control B and update the documentation. 
So it just says send the exit message if the user clicks the X in the module main panel. You can save that. And when we click exit, an announcement is going to be made to the calling module. So in the server, we're going to receive a broadcast message. So we're going to add an event case, go to module did stop. Okay, and then we'll update the module ring by dragging in update select module ring and wiring in the reference. And then control shift S to save. And let's make sure that works. So we're going to launch a new chat window. In fact, let's launch a couple of them. And we can see that we have two, three, and four. If I close number three, which is the middle one, see we now have two and four. I will double check to make sure they work. So two works and number four works. And they should both work with all. I can launch another chat window and send the chat to all of them. So the last thing that remains is to allow these individual chat windows to communicate with other chat windows. We're going to use a very similar technique like we did in the server. In fact, let's just copy and paste this ring. And so now the chat window is going to be able to say, hey, I want to send this message to, and then choose a specific chat window. As before, we're going to initialize the chat window selection by creating a reference. And then from the project, we can initialize it. To update this ring, I'm actually going to send a message from the server down to the chat rooms to say, update your rings. So to do that, let's go to tools, Delacor, DQMH, event, create new DQMH event. The module will be the chat window, it's a request. And then we'll say update ring. And we don't need any data, so we can click OK. This is now going to script a message for us to prompt an update to the ring. Quickly sort out the tester. And then when we receive this request, I'm going to update the selected module string by giving it a reference and saving it. And that's really all we have to do. And then we're going to send the update message in the server, basically whenever we're updating it here. So we can send the update ring message to all of them. So we'll send it there. And here, let's quickly test that from the server. So we'll run, add a new chat window. Add a new chat window. You can see that these chat windows received a new updated register. If we close number three, then it's been updated and we only have two and four left. If we close number four, we only have number two. So when we click send now, we want to send a message written in here to this chat window. So right click send, go to create, event case, invent value change. Then once we're in here, we'll be wanting to send this message to this chat room. And now we can send that new message by going to the module ID and message out, wire up the errors, click save. Now let's give this a go and make sure it works. So hopefully this will be a fully working system. So we'll launch the new chat window. So we've got two, three, four and five. Now let's say chat window two wants to send chat window four a message. So let's go to chat window four then say hello number four, click send. Number four received that message. They can then talk back to number two and send. Number three here could send a message to everyone and click sends. And the server is still able to send messages to everyone. And if someone logs out of the chat room, let's say 002, 
we close 002, notice how there's no 002 in these menus. So I think that's it, job done. As always, you can find a link to download this code in the description. Please like, comment and subscribe and play around with the code if you get a chance. Catch you later.